Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And a special welcome to those who are present here at the Church of Jesus, the Living Water in La Mode, in Our Lady Help of Christians Parish, Folio in St. George's. And a very, very extra special welcome to all those who are joining us in, on Facebook, on Good News Catholic Radio, and all the other platforms of Good News Catholic Communications. The readings speak to us this morning about prayer. So, as we call to mind our sins, perhaps we should especially ask forgiveness for the times that we neglected prayer, or the times that we prayed in a, a wrong way, in a self-satisfied way, or in a selfish way. We tell God we're truly sorry, and we ask with great confidence for pardon and for peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Mercy on us, o Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. For when we cannot choose words in order to pray properly, the Spirit himself expresses our plea in a way that could never be put into words. And God who knows everything in our hearts knows perfectly well what he means. And that, he, that, and that the plea of the saints expressed by the Spirit are accordance to the mind of God. We know that by turning everything to their good God, cooperate with all those who love him, 
with all those that he has called according to his purpose. They are the ones he chose, specially long ago, and intended to become true images of his son, so that his son might be the eldest of many brothers. He called those he intended for this. Those he called, he justified. And with those he justified, he shared his glory. The word of the Lord. The response, Lord, I trust in your mercy. Look at me. Answer me. Lord my God, give light to my eyes, lest I fall asleep in death. Lest my enemies say, I have overcome him. Lest my foes rejoice to see my fall. Lord, Lord, As for me, I trust in your merciful love. Let my heart rejoice in your saving help. Let me sing to the Lord for his goodness to me. Sing in psalm to the name of the Lord, the Most High. Lord, Lord Gospel affirmation. Hallelujah. 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 I am the way, the truth, and the light, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went through towns and villages, teaching, making his way to Jerusalem. Someone said to him, Sir, will there be only a few saved? He said to them, Try your best to enter by the narrow door, because, I tell you, Many will try to enter and will not succeed. Once the master of the house has got up and locked the door, you may find yourself knocking on the door saying, Lord, open to us. But he will answer, I do not know where you come from. Then you will find yourself saying, We once ate and drank in your company. You taught in our streets. But he will reply, I do not know where you come from. Away from me, all you wicked men. And then there will be weeping and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves turned outside. And men from east and west, from north and south will come and take their places in the feast at the kingdom of God. Yes, there are those now last who will be first, and those now first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. So I think one of the things that displeased Jesus most, or that Jesus found it hardest to deal with, was complacency and self-righteousness. You know, the feeling that that I'm all right, I'm saved, I'm good, I'm this, I'm happy, I'm all right. And with that attitude goes a a sense of, perhaps, of looking down on others. But um, Jesus warns us against that, and especially uh, feeling that kind of complacency that he expresses there. He said, you will find yourself saying, We once ate and drank in your company. You taught in our streets. We prophesied in your name. We did miracles in your name. And he will say, Away from me, you wicked men. I do not know where you come from. That's kind of frightening. So, we have to, all the time, try to be aware of ourselves and of our need for God's grace and God's mercy. And the need to as Jesus told us, to try to be perfect. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And that's a constant uphill struggle. And as soon as we start, stop struggling and feel satisfied where we're at, then we're in trouble and we're not going to reach our destination. 
So, Jesus, <clears throat> in the first reading there, St. Paul reminds us that um, our prayer is inadequate. I mean, some of us like to say long prayers and we like to be very, um, uh, very dramatic and engage in all kinds of, of, of gesticulations and uh, expressions and waving our hands and shouting hallelujah and, and, uh, and expressing great emotion in prayer and engaging in histrionics. But none of that impresses God. The only thing that impresses God is what comes deep from the depths of our heart. <clears throat> and what should be in the depths of our heart is that deep trust, that deep confidence in the love of God. And that even though we, in the depths of our hearts, we desire something, whatever it may be, something good, and we want it more than anything else, and we beg God for it, God doesn't always just give us what we ask for or what we think we want, but always what is good for us and what is best for us. And that's sometimes hard to accept. Because we cannot understand why, how can this possibly not be good? The example I like to give is uh, a good mother with a little, little child in the kitchen. And the little child wants to cut something. And there's a great big shiny knife. And he asks Mammy, Mammy, I, let me use the knife. I need that big knife. I want to cut this. And Mammy says, No, no, no. No, that's too, too dangerous for you. But Mammy, I'll be careful. No, I promise you. But the good mother will not give something like that to the little child. Instead, she will give the little child something that is good for the child, something that the child can use, something that is better for the child. So the child might be very, very disappointed that he didn't get what he asked for or what he wanted. But that was out of the love the mother had for the child. And it's very difficult for us sometimes to, to realize that. And then we look at the quality of our prayer <clears throat> and I think <coughs> in my experience is that distractions are a constant a constant problem I find my mind going I try to settle down to pray to God and all kinds of other things coming to mind all kinds of worries and anxieties and plans and hopes and I must do this and I mustn't do that all kinds of distractions and we realize how inadequate our prayer is but what God wants is for us to, 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 to keep on going, not to give up, never to, to, never to give up on prayer. And the consolation that we have in the first reading there is that the Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. For when we cannot choose words in order to pray properly, the Spirit himself expresses our plea in a way that could never be put into words. And God, who knows everything in our hearts, knows perfectly well what he means, and that the pleas of the saints expressed by the Spirit are according to the mind of God. So I think what God is saying to us there is what we can only do is just to open our minds and our hearts honestly to God. And that deep desire that is in your heart, just let God see it. Just try to articulate it to God. And when we are sincere in that, well, then the Spirit makes up for our weakness and puts that need before God. And, you know, prayer is, is, is more than just saying words. And in fact, God doesn't even need words because God knows what's in our heart, whether it's praise or thanksgiving or begging or asking or petition or adoration, whatever it may be, God knows what's in our heart. So if we can just... Put that before God. Just just look into our hearts and see what is there and lay it before God as it is and leave it in his hands. Then I think that is the, is the, is the best form of prayer. And of course we must always remember that prayer is not only speaking. It's not only us talking to God. It's also God talking to us. That we need to be quiet, to be still and to allow God to speak in our hearts. And if we are still and if we are quiet and we just recall the words that we heard at Mass this morning, recall the words that Jesus spoke, recall the words of the Gospel, the words of the first reading, or maybe something from the responsorial psalm or even the Gospel acclamation, something that God has said to us, and we will surely find that 
it has some significance, that it says something, that it sparks something, that it gives some little insight, some little inspiration, some little understanding perhaps of something that's going on in our lives. So we know, again St. Paul tells us, we know that by turning everything to their good, God cooperates with those who love him. And with all those that he has called, with all those that he has called according to his purpose. They are the ones he chose specially long ago and intended to become true images of his Son. You know, there's a verse in the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, it's chapter 1, verse 4, that God had us in mind. Before the, before the world was made, God chose us. He chose us in Christ to be holy and to live through love in his presence. Now, if we can get our minds around that, that God chose me, before he made the world, before there was any Grenada or there was any Caribbean Sea or any Europe or America or North Pole or China, God, before there was any stars or sun, God had me and God had you in his mind. He chose long ago to be true images of his son. He called those he intended for this and those he called he justified. And we can only be very humble in listening for God to call our name. And with those he justified, he shared his glory. So, God is there for us. He's on our side. He loves us. And we try to come to him as, as, as lovingly and as, as childlike and as, um, as dependent, knowing that we are dependent on him, but knowing also that with him, knowing also that with God's power and with God's sp spirit, uh, augmenting our prayers and inspiring our prayers that all things are possible. We can look forward even to miracles. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand now please for the prayers of intercession. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know that you know even the secret thoughts in the depths of our hearts. You know our motives, you know our uh, fears, our hopes and our dreams. And Lord, we ask you to help us that we may never try to deceive you or ourselves or other people by mouthing empty phrases or by even by raising our voices and uh, pretending and, and thinking, Lord, that we can change your mind by words or by actions. Lord, hear us. Lord, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, who has taught us to pray, who taught his apostles to pray, and who teaches us to pray. Help us, grant us the gift of prayer, prayer with sincerity and prayer with humility of heart. Lord, hear us. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for our Bishop, Clyde Harvey. We pray for all the priests and the deacons and the religious brothers and sisters of this diocese. We pray for the leaders of all the parishes and all the communities within the parishes, Lord. We pray for all your holy people, Lord. We ask you to help us to be people of sincere, humble, genuine faith. Lord, hear us. And we lift up to you this morning, Lord, all those who are to receive you in holy communion. Lord, you know each and every one of those who are confined to their homes at this time. Lord, we pray that your presence may bring them comfort and joy and gladness. Lord, hear us. If anyone would like to make a prayer, I invite you to do so at this time. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we place all these prayers before you this morning in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yes. 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and by the blood of the cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things and, all who obey, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out 
for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with, your blessed, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Clyde Martin, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Remember that the apostles asked Jesus, he said, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus taught us to pray. And he told us when we pray, these are the words we should use. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's just turn and give a little nod, a little wave, a little smile, a little nod to each other.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter my Let us pray. 
May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And have a blessed rest of the day, everybody. Bank remains committed to providing all its valued customers with high quality and personalized service in a safe and comfortable environment. In order to maintain COVID-19 protocols while serving you, it has become necessary to arrange an appointment with your relationship officer or the customer service representative at your branch for the following products and services. Loans, overdrafts, credit cards, New accounts to include savings, checking, certificate of deposit, and foreign currency. Reactivation of dormant accounts and private banking for existing customers only. You may also log on to our website, complete the application form for the service required, and submit via email to your specific branch. Requests for appointment can also be emailed to customerservice at republicgrenada.com or via private message on our Facebook page. For private banking service, kindly contact your specific branch via telephone. We look forward to welcoming you. Republic Bank, we're the ones for you. This is a special appeal to the general public. 
from the Diocese of St. George's in Grenada. In light of this unusual and unforeseen circumstances that we are currently facing, and to meet ongoing social and financial obligations, the Diocese is seeking your kind assistance by way of monetary contributions. If you can and are able to assist, donations can be made in the name of the Roman Catholic Bishop in Grenada at the following commercial banks. First Caribbean International Bank, account number 1071603. Republic Bank Grenada Limited, account number 9201957. And Grenada Cooperative Bank, account number 11300005966. In addition, checks and contributions can be addressed to the Roman Catholic Bishop in Grenada and delivered to the Catholic Chancery, Church Street, St. George's. Contributions can be made via wire transfers or electronic fund transfer. For further information, please contact us at 1473-459-4612 or 1473-440-5254 or, or email gncc at catholicgnd.org. Thank you for your contribution. And may God continue to graciously bless us all.